And somebody might say, are you related to so-and-so? Are you uh, uh, connected to so-and-so? And it ought to mean something uh, positive because of the name. In other words, the Bible says a good name is better than riches. Yes, if your name, your name can open up doors if it is a good name and God promises him that I'm going to make your name great. And, 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 and then he says, I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm going to make you a blessing. Um, you're going to be a blessing to other people. You should want to be a blessing to other people. There's nothing wrong with accumulating stuff. There's nothing wrong with having influence. But isn't it, wouldn't it be great, um, you and, and, your, and your partner, you and your husband, you and your wife, you as a couple, wouldn't it be great after you've retired and you've accumulated, and you, uh, wouldn't it be great to say, let's, let's drive over to Florida Memorial University and sit down and talk with the president and let's sit down and talk with those who are in institutional advancement and, and development. Let's talk about how we can set up a scholarship in perpetuity to students who meet a certain criteria. Or, and, 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 and you simply have the ability to bless people. I mean, I'm going to tell you something about blessing people. The Bible says that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, which, which it says this. Whenever you bless somebody else's life, you always come away from that experience feeling more blessed than the person who received the blessing from you. And so, if you, when you, if you want your life to really be blessed, you want to get to the place where you can contribute and give to people's lives. Because the more you give, the more blessing this, that comes back to you. And so, he says, you will be a blessing. And then he says, I'm going to watch over you. He says, whoever blesses you, I'm going to bless them. And then whoever curses you, I'm going to curse you. And so... Here's the power of vision. So I want to encourage you as a couple, um, as a partnership, to first come to some agreement on what is it that we want to do great together. And that can be everything from discovering a cure to an illness to I want to break, we want to break the cycle, the historic cycle of our family. We want to be able to usher our children into a different space. And when the next generation um, uh, begins to emerge as adults, we want them to be in a different space than when our families have been historically. Or your great vision of yourself may be, we want to own our own home and pay that out off. Or your vision of yourself may be this. We want to go and we want to retire as missionaries. And we want to go on the mission field and we want to spend the rest of our lives until until, our, until we die on a mission field serving people and helping people know the love of God. Whatever it is, it's, it's not all the same thing. It's different for different people. I want to build, we want to build a business together. We want to build a business that outlasts us, that employs people, that has franchises across the United States. It's, it's different and for different people, but whatever it is, um, you want to be able to agree on it and do it together. Now, last thing. Last thing we're going to talk about today. In order to achieve this vision, uh, you're going to have to be able to do this next thing. You see, we know Abraham's start. This, is where the, this, is, this was the beginning. This is like getting married. This is the proposal. So that's a challenge. Secondly, uh, he has to relocate from the place that he's familiar with. That's a challenge. Then there are men who are more influential than he is as he's traveling, trying to find this place that God's sending him to, that try to take his wife from him. That's a challenge. God promised him a son, and, and, and him and Sarah, they're going to have a son. But it took 25 years for the son to be born. Then between the promise of a son and the birth of the son, Abram has a baby by the housekeeper. Oh, my God. Not by somebody out, outside the house, but the housekeeper. He has a baby by the housekeeper. And so that's a problem. Then Sarah wants to kick the housekeeper and the baby out in the streets. That's a problem. In other words, he has these very critical issues that rise up in the marriage that are a threat to the marriage and a threat to the vision. I want to say something to us couples. No one will escape the critical challenges that face every marriage. Now listen, when we saw Eunice and John Johnson being married for more than 50 years, all tuxedoed up and all fashioned up and being honored by the NAACP and 
getting a national awards. The truth is, we're seeing the end product. But if you go back and examine what took place in these various chapters in their lives, there were some chapters that threatened to break up that marriage. And so when you are a power couple, somehow you find two things. You find the grace of God and the faith in God. The grace of God and the faith in God to help you overcome these challenges. I say the grace of God because these things that are threatening to break up your marriage have broken up other marriages before. They're not nothing to play with. These are not light things. These are serious things. But they find the grace of God. And then they have the faith in God to believe somehow as bad as this is, God is able to help us overcome it. And so you want to discover as a couple, power couple, strong couple, couple that, that survives and ends up being a contributor and a blessing and their lives are blessed. Uh, you want to be able to discover how do we foster uh, this ability to uh, compromise and come out of difficulties stronger and better and leave them in the past and move towards that vision that God has given us. So I want to give you three scriptures. Three scriptures. Three scriptures to think about. Three scriptures to think about. And they're in Psalm 34. Okay? Excuse me, Psalm 37. Is that right? Psalm 34? I think it's Psalm 37. Psalm 37. All right? Verse 17, 18, and 19. It's either Psalm 34 or Psalm 37. I don't have time to turn to it, but I have them here. All right? And here's, here's what they say, verse 17. The righteous cry, the Lord hears, and he delivers them from all their troubles. That's one verse, Psalm 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, the Lord hears, and he delivers them from all their troubles. I want you to believe that today. The second verse is verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. God's not going to leave you when you're at your lowest point. In a marriage that you're trying to keep together and you know that I, I've, got every, I've got every reason to go ahead and get my Samsonite and go. And I feel like God has turned his back on me and God has left me and God has brought us here and put me in this situation that he knows that I am not strong enough to stay through this. And God broke his promise. God abandoned me. But look at what the scripture says. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And then it says he saved those Look at this next part, who are crushed in spirit. And, and the reason this verse is here is because this is what real people go through. I'm not talking about fake people who every day they're blessed and highly favored and everything is great and everything is wonderful and, and God is just so good every day. Real people go through these crushing experiences in their lives and you will go through it in your marriage. The promise of marriage is not that you live happily ever after. The promise of marriage is that we will go through the challenges and come out on the other side bigger, stronger, and closer together. But the honest truth, anybody who stays in it for 50, 60 years will say we have some dark days. But we found a way to keep the marriage together and overcome these challenges. Last verse. The righteous person may have many troubles, that dispels this whole junky preaching and teaching about if you're saved, you don't have troubles. It's only blessings. The righteous person, I'm not, it doesn't say the sinner. The righteous person, the praying, praying person, the tithing person, the worshiping person, the hymn singing person, the caring for the sick and the hungry person, the family oriented person may have many troubles. But look at here, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there, it doesn't end there. Thank God for the comma and the conjunction. But the Lord delivers them. But the Lord delivers them out of, the, out of them all. 
Not some of them, but all of them. And so Mahalia Jackson used to sing years and years ago. She's an old, old gospel singer. And she had a refrain in her song that said this, My soul looks back and wonders how I got over. And what she was simply saying, I would not have made it here over the challenges and trials and storms except God had intervened in my life. So I'm not going to give a standard invitation today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that you find the strength to continue to pursue the blessing that comes with being a power couple. Bow your heads with me. Dear God, we thank you for Abram and Sarah today. For the example of a real couple And help us to resist the need to dress them up in superficial things. But to understand that their lives, their lives were filled with joy and filled with excitement and filled with good things. But also, they had real challenges. And we have real challenges. And so for those who are listening today and streaming today, I pray for your power, for your presence to comfort them and help them and and help them to understand that it takes both faith and work. But when you work with us, miracles happen. And unbelievable things are possible. And help us, God, to keep the vision in mind whenever we're faced with a great obstacle. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I leave you today, you may want to consider getting more spiritual help in your life. We have people standing by who would be glad to pray with you or counsel with you. If you would text the word prayer to 91011 or decision to 91011, we have uh, men and women, brothers and sisters who are there who are uh, more than glad to pray with you and to help you today and to be a, a, a source of strength. Also, I want to remind the congregation of the Fountain Church that uh, at the end of this month, the last Sunday in this month, we will celebrate communion virtually. We're going to have a wonderful experience with that. So I'm just giving you a heads up that is coming down the road and uh, to prepare yourself for it. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today and we look forward uh, to ministering and connecting with you next week right here at the Fountain. This month's edition of the Fountain Night Live, that's yeah, Friday, yeah. May 22nd at 7 o'clock. And we're going to be having a conversation about the universal topic of prayer. I want you to join us because we want to hear your questions. We want you to give us your feedback. But we want you to hear what these great presenters are going to say. So that's Friday night, May 22nd, 7 o'clock, the Fountain Church. Go to our Facebook page and we're looking forward to meeting. Pastor Lomax for that powerful word of inspiration and hope. Online community and friends, we are so glad you chose to worship with us and we hope you enjoyed yourself. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe below to our VidTivo channel for video on demand and alerts. As Pastor mentioned, if you've made a decision for Christ today or you just need prayer, our servants at the Fountain are here to support you. Simply text DECISION to 91011 or PRAYER to 91011. By the way, we are so grateful for every gift to further our ministry. So if you'd like to support us, just click the DONATE or GIVE button above. We look forward to spending time with you again next week Sunday at 9.45 a.m. right here at thefountain.net. Tell a friend to tune in. They don't want to miss it. Again, thanks for joining us at the Fountain Online Experience where we are growing and serving others.